How are your magnesium levels? Probably not that great. Most of us do not have optimal magnesium levels. And so today we're gonna to talk about the power of magnesium, why it's so important and essential for our body's function. I'm Risa Morimoto, your host. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach and you're watching Modern Aging where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to elevate our health and well-being as we age. If you're new to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe. All you gotta do is click on that little red button below with that little bell next to it to be sure to be notified whenever a new episode is posted. And if you haven't checked out our website yet, do so at this is modernaging.com where we post new articles and videos and podcasts every single week. So today my guest is Kristen Bowen. She is the founder of Living the Good Life Naturally. We talk about her personal health crisis actually over 20 years ago that led her to discover the power of magnesium in her healing journey. We talked about um, why it's so important um, and why it's a foot soak, why transdermal magnesium is the, transdermally is the best way to get, take your magnesium and how it's so helpful to re reduce inflammation, help with mus muscle relaxation, um, cramping, uh, restoring your red blood cells and even sleep. Kristen, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm ready to geek out on all things magnesium. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I mean, oh, we're going to talk about all the m wonderful things about magnesium. Many of us who I think we all know of magnesium, but we don't really know, I think, the depth of which it is necessary for our health um, and also just the magic powers of magnesium. So before we start, I want to hear your story and how you actually came to this point. How did you create Living the Good Life Naturally? And how did magnesium help you on, on your journey, on your health journey? So I had a complete health crash after a surgery, simple bladder tie up after a baby was born. Um, my body, we call it the crash in my family and my body shut down and it was a combination of a titanium reaction. I have what's called Melissa syndrome, which at the time wasn't even known about or acknowledged, but my body reacts to titanium and that was used in the bladder tie up. The other problem was the cadaver graft that was used to make a sling for my bladder to hold it up was bought off market and had black mold and I had an autoimmune going oh. into the surgery. And that trifecta of three things shut my system down. I coded on the table, ended up seizures, wheelchairs, feeding tubes, catheters for three and a half years. I was pretty non-existent. Um, as a human being. My husband had to take over, took a leave of absence. And so literally it was through sheer desperation. Went to Stanford, went to Mayo, followed, chased anyone that we thought would have a solution um, to help me put the pieces back together. And we never did. We got lots of um, diagnosis that were were not accurate, kind of shooting in the dark, trying to put the pieces together. But it wasn't until a physician's assistant actually took the time to listen to us and think outside of the box and said, I have no idea what's happening, but I'm willing to do some research. And he was the one that came back to us and said, I've read about this Melissa syndrome and there's no way to prove that you have it unless we go back in and take it out. And at that point, my husband felt major responsibility because I'd almost lost my life the previous surgery. So he brought my mom in to help make that decision. And at that point, the two of them decided that my quality of life was so non-existent that it was time to take that level of risk. And so coming out of that surgery, I remember it, where the three and a half years previous, I have very few, very sketchy memory of that time period. I was very insulated by not remembering that. My family wasn't, though. And so it was at that point that I realized how sick I was and something had to change. I had a young family at home that that I wanted to be actively involved in their lives. And it was through desperation that we found out about magnesium and the stress. Stress of day-to-day -day living decreases our magnesium, whether it's a major stress 
or a minor stress. And so understanding and really wrapping my head around that is what created living the good life naturally. Wow. That's a, I can't even imagine how many years ago is this now? Uh, about 20. Yeah. So 20 my years. God. It was and the beginning of the end. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. That's amazing. That's really amazing. And a testament to your husband and your oh. mom and Three and a half years is a long time, you know, and I cannot imagine what you went through, my God. Um, but I guess this journey was for you to discover magnesium and the power of magnesium and to share that to the with the world. Um, it you know, has I, been we my see passion. magnesium supplements, you know, everywhere in the supermarket, right. wherever you are. Um, so tell me, let's go back to kind of basics, right? Okay. Why is magnesium so essential to our health? You know, you and I are recording this in 2022. And I think this year, more than any other time collectively on the planet, we understand how important it is for each of us to have a strong immune system. We want, we need, we recognize we need a strong immune system. You don't get that without a strong vitamin D level. And more and more people are understanding the importance of vitamin D. But guess what? Your vitamin D levels don't decrease and drop unless your magnesium dropped first. And so is what we're doing is we're addressing a problem, not where it started, but we're patching our vitamin D with a Band-Aid, when in reality, we need to go back to where the problem started, bring the magnesium levels up so that our body has the enzymes and the tools that it needs to take stored vitamin D and turn it into active vitamin D that increases our immune system. And that's where the problem started was with low magnesium status. And it's time to upgrade our magnesium. We simply cannot do that with oral magnesium. You would have to take so much of whatever kind it was, citric, um, malate, whatever kind, you would have to take so much it would cause intense digestion issues. And so that's where soaking in magnesium really closes that gap, helps us achieve cell saturation and get our stored and our active vitamin D doing what they need to do to create that strong immune system. Wow. I mean, I think we underestimate our skin, right? That it can, that it's our largest organ and that we can soak in it rub you know whether it's a topical lotion or whatever in order to so what's actually happening when we soak in magnesium well your body's up taking that elemental magnesium from the magnesium chloride in the 50s um, the thinking at the time in the scientific world was that our skin was like an armadillo pad that nothing penetrated it but we know so differently now. We have nicotine patches, we have hormone patches. We know that depending on the size of the molecule, but we know that our skin absorbs into it. And what our skin absorbs, our liver has to break down. And so we're taking that absorption of our skin and that updated, upgraded knowledge that our skin does absorb certain things and that it does absorb magnesium and can move our magnesium red blood cell numbers. Wow. So it's actually helping our red blood cells. Yes. So you were talking um, about cell saturation. What do you Mm -hmm. mean by that? So... So many times when we think of magnesium, I will hear people say, oh, I took magnesium to relax my shoulders, or I took magnesium to move my digestion, or I took this type of magnesium for my brain. Well, I don't want to spot treat my body. Losing my health for that three and a half years I recognize the things that can never be replaced. And so I don't want spot treatments. I want optimal health. And I want to give my body the nutrients and the minerals that it needs to do what it needs to do. And magnesium is the first thing that it needs. And so 
the oral pills cannot get you to that cell saturation where every cell is surrounded by magnesium because your heart needs magnesium, your pancreas needs magnesium, your bones need magnesium, your hormones need magnesium, your peristaltic action in your gut need magnesium, your gut flora needs magnesium, your brain needs magnesium. But if we're just spot treating and getting a little bit, there's not enough magnesium to give to all of those organs in our body that need the magnesium. It's when there's magnesium around every single cell that we really start to see magnesium do what it can do and give us the full benefit. And one of the things I learned with that crash is I don't do band-aid approaches. It's overwhelming it's expensive and it doesn't get me to where I want to be. And my goals for my health is to keep up with my five grandbabies. I want to run with them. I want to walk the ocean with them. I want to climb trees with them. I want to kneel with my knees and play trains. We're really into trains right now. And so that spot treatment doesn't get me to those end goals. But surrounding every cell with magnesium, that's the bridge that helps get me to where I want to be when it comes to my health. Right. Wow, that's amazing. So what did taking magnesium do for you when you were, you know, kind of at that turning point um, with your health crisis? And how did it help you? Like, how did you feel? And how were you taking it? And Um, How did you know it was the magnesium? So it was, for me, it was such an immediate response. I put my feet in that magnesium soak. It was just a bowl of water that I put my feet in. And within 10 minutes, it was like my shoulders had taken this big sigh. Magnesium is the relaxer mineral. And is what happens when we're in fight or flight is we create a calcium dominant environment. Health is not created in a calcium dominant environment. Now we need calcium, it's important, but not calcium dominance. And you need magnesium to offset calcium. They need to work together. And I had a calcium dominant environment because of all of the stress, the financial stress, the mental stress, the spirit, everything, every part of our lives was impacted by that health crash. And so for me, about 10 minutes in, those shoulders relaxed. I found myself sitting back a little bit. My head went back and it was like this big internal sigh and I just wanted more. Now, everyone's experience is not the same with magnesium. It depends on your thyroid function, your levels of inflammation, your hydration. There are so many things that play a role in how you experience soaking in magnesium. And for the last 20 years, I've asked questions to the point of annoying people to get data to learn about people's experience and really shorten the learning curve on what we need to do to optimize and maximize that magnesium so that we can get out there and do the things that we need to do in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you're saying soak in magnesium, you said it's a foot soak, Mm -hmm. so you don't have to take you don't have to bathe in it no. or is it better you to get more effective? You know, is it more effective if you bathe in it? Um, and how much do you actually need in order to feel anything? Yeah, those are great questions. And here's what I've learned over the last 20 years of collecting data and asking questions. And that is you need a quarter of a cup and we want that magnesium from, or I do, I should say, I want that magnesium from a clean source and I don't want it diluted. I want it at minimum a 30% elemental saturation. For example, Epsom salts, it would take 400 cups of Epsom salts to equal a quarter cup of that magnesium chloride. What? And so I know. And that's why a lot of people, the number one question I get is, oh, I soak in Epsom. That's great. We know they relax the muscles, but my goal is cell saturation. And so looking through that filter of what I'm wanting for my body, Epsom salts don't give me 
where I want to go. I want more than just relaxed muscles. And so we've found a quarter of a cup. Your body can't uptake more than that. So it's a waste of magnesium. A minimum of 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, we've tested the water after. And in 20 minutes, your body will absorb approximately 80% of the magnesium. In 45 minutes, approximately 98% of the magnesium. So I always tell people minimum 20 up to 45, you can soak longer, but you're not getting more magnesium while you soak. It's not detrimental, but you're not getting more. And I thought for sure, and it made sense to me, oh, soaking in a bathtub will be more beneficial because more of my body will be exposed right. to the magnesium. Not so. We ran a test with women and we found out, and then we tested their magnesium before, we tested their magnesium after, and the ones in the bathtub did not achieve cell saturation any faster than the ones in in the soaking water. In fact, we had a smaller percentage that achieved cell saturation. And that drove me nuts for numerous years. And here's what I discovered through a completely random pathway. My husband ended up with double amputee. He has a a vein issue. And so his legs were dying. So we needed to take those off. And we had such a hard time getting him to cell saturation after the amputations. And we know that anesthesia decreases your magnesium levels. So anytime you have surgery, you need to get those magnesium levels back up. And so I wanted his magnesium levels back up. We couldn't do it. Your feet uptake the magnesium. Your feet are the main uptake for magnesium. And so then I started thinking, oh, wait a minute. When I'm in the bathtub, there's a lot of times I put my feet up out of the water. My, my tub is not this massive soaker tub. It's a little smaller. And so just to be more comfortable, I pop my feet up. So I immediately reached out to that group of women that had not achieved cell saturation by soaking in the bathtub. 100% of them had put their feet up during. So I said, okay, we've got to run this again. Would you be willing, have your magnesium tested again, we'll test it after, keep your feet in the water. It happened, they all achieved cell saturation. So yes, other parts wow. of our body absorb some magnesium. Your feet act like pumps. And that's what's utilizing the maximum benefit of magnesium. So the bathtub is no more efficient than just a small bowl of water. And it doesn't even have to come past your ankle. You just need to have contact with the water and the bottom of your feet. My sweet mom, who's 85, well, she'll be 86 this year. She was carrying this great big massive bowl of water filled to the very top and she was like this is getting so hard for me and so we started doing some more testing and that's when we realized oh it doesn't need to be clear up to the ankles it's the bottom of your feet that need to have contact so now she puts in an inch of water and it's so much easier for her to carry and get her soaking done wow so it doesn't even matter how much water as long as yeah. you have a quarter cup Quarter cup You're not of magnesium. More by having more water in it. Nope. Mm -mm. Now we do reach a point after a regular size bathtub. So let's say you have like a three person jacuzzi that people can hop in and have a party. At that point, the volume of the water starts decreasing the uptake. But if we're talking a single person bathtub or a bowl of water, that volume of water does not change the uptake of the magnesium. After that, it does. That's amazing. Wow. So interesting, The just the little things. It makes me so grateful for the people that I've asked all those questions because it's through all of their learned experience that I've been able to drill into that data to just make it easier for all of us to get to cell saturation. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So you talked about um, that it's magnesium chloride yes. that you use for the soaking. Mm -hmm. um, so why magnesium chloride versus the other forms of magnesium? 
Because we want sea brine magnesium. So we import what the magnesium. It comes from the sea. It comes from an ancient seabed in the Zechstein Sea, and it has cofactors. Um, think of ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid does not give you the benefit because now it's made synthetically. It's not made like it used to be from citric acid. Ascorbic acid does not give you the benefit of vitamin C. Why? Because it doesn't have the cofactors, and it's made from high fructose corn syrup. So the cofactors are important in a nutrient working together. And I like to think of that like my marriage. I'm good on my own. I'm better with my husband. 34 years and then I'm just better and better with my husband. We work better together as a team. And nutrients are the same way in our body. We have the nutrient and then we have the cofactor supporting players. And so we need those cofactor supporting players happening. And that doesn't happen in a magnesium chloride that's been manufactured in a lab. In fact, we tested that because it would be very inexpensive to use that. And I'm all about minimum output for maximum benefit. And so when we tested that, it didn't move anybody's numbers at all. It's synthetic and it's missing the cofactors. And so we went to the different places. I could get it from Russia. There's a source there, but it's very high in heavy metals. My warehouse is in Utah. I could get it there from the um, Salt Lake, um, there in the Salt Lake. And it's high in heavy metals currently, and it could change, but currently the cleanest place to get it is from that Zextine C bed and it has the cofactors that help move your cell saturation numbers and that's my ultimate goal wow that's amazing so everybody probably has low magnesium so much. it's the uh, number one deficiency and depending on the studies anywhere from 80 to 95 percent of us are not just deficient but extremely deficient. So let's let's I, I want to explain why. When you get stressed and you're and you feel frustrated or you feel stressed out, you feel that tightening in your body, that cortisol going up, your magnesium goes out through your body through urine. And so you're losing that very nutrient that you need to act as the spark plug to start thousands of processes in your body. If you eat sugar, it eats up your magnesium to process that sugar. If you eat processed foods, it eats up your magnesium to be there for your body. Certain, most medications, not all, but most medications decrease magnesium. Alcohol decreases magnesium. Smoking decreases magnesium. And so our current lifestyle is a calcium dominant lifestyle and we have to do something to stop that and offset that. I'm really I think it's really important that we stay current on what's happening to be healthy, that we hang on to that grandma wisdom, get enough sleep, drink your water, eat your vegetables, chew your food well and be good to other people. Just the basic grandma wisdom. We also need to be updated, though, as to what's currently happening. And my grandparents didn't have the level of magnesium deficiency that we do now currently because they were getting it from their food. But because of the overuse of synthetic fertilizers, the magnesium's in the soil, but it's bound and the plant can't take it up. So it used to be 20, 25 years ago, you could go to the grocery store and buy a conventional, not organic, but conventional red pepper, and you could get your day's worth of magnesium. Now you can buy an organic red pepper and there's not even trace amounts of magnesium in it. And so we have to hold on to that grandma wisdom, but stay current and make choices that match the problems that we're facing currently. And currently, you simply cannot get enough magnesium from your food. And so we need to offset that through soaking. So, you know, I, I totally understand that everyone is magnesium deficient or most people. Um, is, there, is there kind of like 
the top tier of people who really should, if they're having some sort of chronic illness, people who have chronic illness, I don't know if they're having, you know, osteoporosis, if it bone issues or oh, they're uh, digestive issues, deficient. but those are the people who should like try magnesium um, soaks. Well, I, I know it's, <laughs> it's so hard, right? But, I have, I have a confession I'll make. <laughs> I think everybody should. My goal, and um, this was my goal when I started the company, is that every single person in the United States understands the role magnesium plays and understands cell saturation, and then they can decide if they want to soak to get there. I think it benefits everyone. Um, I have a little grandbaby that I talked to my daughter yesterday, and he wasn't sleeping well. And I said to her, how's your magnesium? Grandma can send some more. And she went, oh my gosh, in my exhaustion, I totally forgot magnesium. Called her this morning and said, how did he sleep? One bathtub of magnesium, and he slept better that night. And so pregnant women... Um, we know that acid reflux in a baby is a magnesium deficiency in a mama because the baby can only get as much magnesium as mama has to offer. And so pregnant women, it's so important that they get their magnesium levels up. Someone dealing with osteoporosis or osteopenia, we know your magnesium levels are down and your calcium dominant. Now, and, and here's where here's where there's a problem because right there I kind of sounded like a late night infomercial <laughs> and <laughs> you remember Ron Pope are you old I don't know if you're old enough but Ron Pope was this guy who came on late night and it diced and it shredded I mean that one kitchen gadget he sold oh, yeah. he just got you convinced it did everything and we had one of those and it, and it was awesome but it didn't do everything and I start, I, it's like in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, here, here it comes. And it, it doesn't solve everything. I'm not saying someone who has osteopenia or osteoporosis, if they soak in magnesium, that boom, their bones are going to be healthy. That that's, would be such a horrific thing for me to put out there when someone who doesn't feel well wants to get better. It would get their hopes up and then they would crash. And that happens enough when you're wanting to get better, when you've got that sense of desperation that you know something's really off in your body. And so it doesn't heal everything. It is, however, the start where everything went off. And so getting back to the basics of what your cell needs. I live here on the coast in Morro Bay, California, and we're right off of Highway 1, right by that Big Sur Drive, which I think was rated, it's always rated every year in the top five drives to take in the country. It's absolutely beautiful. And we love to drive. I have a little um, Volkswagen Beetle convertible like what I used to drive in high school. And... If that car that we love to get in, put the top down and take that drive, if that car didn't have spark plugs, it could have the oil changed, it could have all the gas it needs, it's never going to start because it needs the spark plug. Magnesium is the spark plug in your body that starts the machine. And so it doesn't heal everything, but it does get you back to being able to start those body processes to get your body healthier and get you feeling better. That's great. So so tell me, how does one test for magnesium? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you know how low you are? Yeah, that is a great question. And here's what I've learned. And that is, there are numerous types of tests. And so I've played with everything that I'm aware of out there over the last 20 years. So... For quite a while, there was two ways to test. One was your blood serum. The other was your red blood cell. Now, Western medicine has that blood serum. And the blood serum, it is magnesium is so important for your body to stay at 1% in your body, magnesium in your blood, that your body will pull from your pancreas. It will change your blood sugars when you're low in magnesium. It will pull from your brain. It will pull from your heart. It will pull from your bones because survival 
is what's happening and it needs to keep your body alive so it will pull from all those areas and keep your magnesium serum levels at one percent and that will show your magnesium status is fine but i don't just want survival i survived and it was hell and we lost we would have lost our home if my mom and dad wouldn't have stepped in and helped us we lost things that can never be replaced. And so I don't want to survive. I want optimal health. And so that red blood cell test shows what's around every cell. And so for a long time, those were the two tests. And then a couple years ago, there was a company out of San Diego that had some big time investment money, like millions and millions and millions of dollars. I think it was 20 or 30 million dollars in this company. And they came up with a urine test, um, like kind of think of like a ketone that you um, use a, a little strip and you test your urine. I was so excited because I thought that is so much easier than going to the lab. And again, I'm all about making it easy. So I tested mine and it was inaccurate. I could test at nine o'clock in the morning and it would show me low. I could test at three o'clock in the afternoon and it would show me high. I could test at seven o'clock at night and it would show me in the middle. And so I don't want to put my money into something that isn't going to be stable and give me results that are accurate. So at this point, that urine test is not valid at all. It's just, I think it could be there and I'm hoping the science eventually will um, jump up to that, but I think they brought it to the market too early. And so the gold standard is that magnesium RBC. And the cool thing is, is you don't have to go to your doctor and try to explain to him and update him on the information. You can go online. I like to use walk-in labs. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just my favorite lab that shows the most accurate magnesium levels. It runs $47. You pay for it online. You take your receipt to one of their labs that they work with and they take your blood. And then in a couple days, it will be in that online portal that you created when you purchased the lab. Now, the downside to that is this. I live in Morro Bay. I have like 20 labs within a couple of miles. I have a good friend who lives in South Dakota and she had to travel three hours. She's very rural and remote. And so please check how close the lab is to you to make sure that it's doable for where you're at. Um, but remember, as important it is to know your numbers in the beginning, I didn't have that for the first 10 years. You need to soak in magnesium and the biggest determining factor is how are you feeling? Are you feeling more rested? Are you waking up a little more energized? Have your leg cramps gone away? Is your reaction to things a little bit different? Magnesium actually will enhance your personality as you shift from calcium dominance over to a magnesium rich environment because you become less reactive. You increase your flexibility. You increase your ability to see solutions when you're not as rigid because of that calcium dominance. So even if you can't or the money's not there to test like $47 might be out of someone's ability to test, that's okay. We know you're probably deficient if you've had sugar, if you've had stress, if you've eaten processed foods or you take medication or have autoimmune, they have a higher magnesium deficiency. We know you're deficient. Let's get you soaking and get you feeling better and not worry as much about the exact number if it's not doable for you. So I have two questions. Okay. Can you have oversaturation? And if you can, what happens? Um, and then how long does it actually take for you to reach saturation? 
Okay, I love both of those questions. So let's deal with the first one, oversaturation. Again, I've been that really pesky friend that has 10 <laughs> questions while I'm typing it in Google Sheets. What happened? What happened? Tell me. And um, so cell saturation happens when your blood work is between 6.3 or above. That's when cell saturation happens. Now, again, look at my filter. I like to be tested because if I'm at 6.3 or above, I'm slowing down my soaking and I'm not going to soak as often. Now, how often I soak and how often you soak depends on our lifestyle, the health of our body, our inflammation levels. And so that's one of the most important things I think that we can learn as women and I really see it empowering women when they recognize I don't have to depend on someone else telling me how much magnesium I need because only I know my individual burn rate. Yes, there's an RDA for magnesium, but that's a survival number. That RDA does not know if you had massive stress last week, if your husband lost his job last week, if you lost your job, if you moved apartments, if you lost a friend or a family member, your magnesium needs go up. And so knowing your numbers and then taking into it the season of life that you're in and bringing those two together will help you dictate and determine how often you need to soak. In 20 years, I've never seen anyone oversaturate and have issues from it. Now, it would be a waste of time and a waste of resources because you don't need it. So that's why I recommend people soak because if you're at 6.3 and you're soaking twice a week, Let's back that off to once every two weeks and then see if you maintain that. And that's how you start to really bring into your own personal knowledge of understanding your burn rate. So for example, I have a birthday in December and I have, uh, we call him the bearded one, my son, and he makes uh, floating custards for me for my birthday. Um, it's from a cookbook I gave him a long time ago, Jamie Oliver, and it's a tradition and we love it and they're loaded with sugar and I eat them and I love them and I hang out with that bearded kid and we have a great time. <laughs> it decreases my magnesium. And so I know in December that my soaking needs to increase because of that and some family stress around traditions and things that are happening in the month of December. So you really need to take into it what's happening to determine how much soaking you need to do because again, I don't want to be that person that is getting healthy, but that's all they do is focus on getting healthy. I want to, I have optimal health so that I can do all the things that I want to do. And so that's why I do love testing so that you can understand your own personal burn rate. And in the 20 years, I've seen people that have come in at 7.9, but there's been no other symptoms or drop of another nutrient. It's just a waste of time and resources. And then what was the second question? You had two. So how long does it take to oh. reach cell saturation? Okay, thank how, much, you. how many days in a row yeah. or do you do it just twice a week? Yeah. What's so the ideal time? Here's what I've developed over the 20 years to be the minimum input with maximum benefits. And that is the first time that you buy magnesium, that you are doing what I call a 30 day challenge. And that's when every day for 30 days, you are going to soak for 20 minutes. Now, for 20 years, I've been telling people that, and I know what just came up for probably 80% of the people listening right now. And that is, I don't have time. Oh my gosh, I can't do that every day. I don't think I've ever done a 30 day challenge and nailed it perfectly. Imperfect action creates better health. And so imperfect action, our goal is 30 day challenge, but we know that 80% of that will meet the mark. And the goal with that 30 day challenge is to hit a minimum of a five 
on your magnesium red blood cell test. And when you hit that five, we know your body's uptaking magnesium, it's moving your red blood cell numbers, and you have the cofactors in your body set up to utilize that to achieve cell saturation. Now, some people will hit it in that 30 days. Other people will hit the five mark, and a few people won't hit the five mark. And so my recommendation for that is Remember, magnesium shines the light on what is broken in your body. And so if you haven't hit that five mark, I've got some questions for you. How's your hydration? How is your B vitamins? Because we know B vitamins are a cofactor to magnesium. How are your taurine levels? And let's look at boron levels. Those are all of the things that I see slowing people down and not achieving that minimum of a five. So the majority of people will hit that five, about 25% in that first 30 days over the 20 years will hit cell saturation. About 10% will not even hit the five, and that's where they really need to course correct and start asking some questions. Okay, why am I not uptaking? Is it inflammation? Is it, you know, what, what do I need to do to bring that inflammation down so that my body can utilize this magnesium? And then after that 30 days, if you've hit that five, we know you need to soak probably two to three times a week so that you're not just maintaining your levels, but you're increasing your levels. If you've hit that cell saturation, let's just keep you at once a week or maybe once every two weeks because as all you have to do is maintain that level. And so how much and how long is very individual, but managing that and learning that really empowers people in, oh my goodness, I am powerful and I am regulating the flow of minerals in my body and I am responsible for keeping the spark plug on so it can activate all the other enzymes for my liver, for my hormones, for my digestion, for my thyroid, for my eyesight, for my heart, for my blood sugar. And keeping those enzymes activated is where we start to see a difference in people and they start to really benefit from magnesium. This is the magnesium soak. And it's, it, you know, it's funny. It doesn't have any scent to it. Hmm. It looks, and it's clear. Mm -hmm. It you know, looks just like water. Color. It's a little yeah. oily. A lot of people will call it magnesium oil because it does have an oily feel to it, but it's technically not an oil, but that's that elemental magnesium that is the benefit. Right, even if you're working, you can do it, right? A lot of times um, I do it while I'm sitting at my desk. I just keep a towel, a little hand towel and a bowl and my magnesium and I'll actually do it. Or a lot of times I'll do it when I'm on a podcast. <laughs> and so it, you just have to add it into your life. Like, um, okay, is it when I'm prepping for a lesson? Is it when I'm working at my desk? Is it right before I go to bed? Is it before I go to work? So just figuring out that time that works well for you. But, and some of, some of the questions that will come up is the best time to soak and, and what people experience. So I'm super excited to come back on and really dive deep on fine tuning and helping people understand what's happening in their body as they soak in magnesium with the things that I've learned over the last 20 years. That's awesome. And Modern Aging viewers and listeners will get 10% off. So I'm gonna put that discount code down below as well as the link. Um, so that you're all going to be you're going to be all set to go, and the instructions are very clear in terms of what to do. Um, but yes, Kristen, this has been so amazing. I'm so excited, and I you know I'm so sorry that you had to go through this in order to discover the power of magnesium. But um, but it's really a great gift that you've given everybody oh, uh, for us to kind of really pay attention. And I think that you know living with a high quality of life is my goal as yeah. well. For as long as possible um because you're absolutely right we don't want to be on these stringent schedules all the time we want to live our life the way we want to live it 
Mm-hmm. Freedom. Um, That's one of my exactly. core values, that freedom to do what I want to do when I have that desire to do it, the freedom. And we need that in our body. I want to kneel on the floor and play trains. <laughs> I want exactly. the freedom to do that. 